What's going on YouTube? Omar aka Tebow back with you again. We are again on the Lancha 037 Rally build. Last time we left off we'd set up our four dampers as well as getting our front gearbox up and running. With step 16 we are opening bag C and our first bit is going to be attaching the front damper stay and the upper arms. One piece to note. So the instructions are not very clear on this and I'm hoping this will come through. If you take a look, these two pieces are not identical on either side. And what I make out from it is, if you take a look, you have one side that has a step or a flange. That is gonna be the side that is going to be attached to the damper state and the sides without are gonna be on the outside of the arms. Just something I wanted to point out because I really had to look at the instructions very carefully um, to get an idea of how that goes on, which I've built a few of these in the past, but for the life of me, I just couldn't remember. Um, now that we have our bits though, and I'm missing two pieces here, so we will get our two gearbox joints. Let's put this front suspension piece together. And we're gonna start out with those arms. So. And always just hand tight, and because it's a suspension component, you wanna make sure that it moves freely. No binding, otherwise your car will handle very poorly. You'll be wondering why, why does my car go from one side to the other and not track straight? With the upper arms mounted, we are going to mount the front damper stay to the top of our front gearbox. And that is held on by two 3x10 screws. Come on, magnetic screwdriver. By the way, just a little tip. I like to tap my screwdrivers against a motor and magnetize the tips just so that it makes it a little bit easier when I'm putting screws on there and that they kind of hold. Which, if you're making a video, can be very handy with the uh, weird angles that you have to input things in order to avoid the camera. One of these days, I am going to get my build table, which is currently right now covered in RC stuff and quad parts. I'm going to get that sorted one of these days and you'll see builds from a completely different angle which I think will be a little bit better. But uh, we're not there yet, but we'll get there. Hand tight again on all these screws. This is the silver plastic, it's a little bit harder. Just make sure you apply a little bit of pressure so you don't strip out the ends of your screws. Once we have those two pieces on, we are then going to just insert our joints, a bit of grease on the splines, not too much, just a little liberal coating, we'll just add a little on here, and here's our first one, once again, just a little light coating, ooh, that was too much. Let me wipe some of that off. Um, I bring this up often and I'll just repeat it for first time kit builders. You know, they only give you so much grease in these kits and you might think it's not a lot. Um, there's actually a ton of grease in there and if you build the kit right, you're not going to use all of it. So if you get to the end and you've used all of it, that's a pretty good idea that uh, you use too much. Anyways, we have our front damper stay, top arms, and the joints in place. Step 17 begins with the assembly of our front axles on this vehicle. Couple key points on here. Your little C-hubs, your upright holders, they look identical, they're not. They're two separate pieces. Um, they are shaped to go in a very specific way. So as you've noticed, I've laid them out in the way that I want. I have my C1 and my C13 over here so that I don't mess those guys up. 
Your arms, on the other hand, are identical. So it doesn't matter which one you use as long as you just put them facing the right way. So on this particular step, just pay attention that you make sure that your C1 is your left hand one and your C13 is going to be your uh, right hand one. And excuse me, see this is exactly why I double check these things. Your C1 is your left and your C13 is your right. So I did lay them out according to how I should have them. This is the C13, this is the C1. And uh, even a quote unquote pro like me has these kind of moments. So just as long as you lay out your parts ahead of time, you shouldn't have any kind of issues. Um, we will start by putting our little ball connectors on our uprights. This is probably one of the quicker bags in this kit, just perusing the instructions in terms of uh, there's not much to do. It's not as involved as putting together the gearboxes or the suspension pieces. Um, this is just pretty straightforward. It's a bunch of screws. Oh, also this step I had mentioned in the first video about waiting on some uh, bearing kit. And this is where Tamiya has done that weird little thing where on these TIO2s, they are using on your uprights, on the inside of the uprights, they are using these uh, 1510 size bearings. And on the outside, they are using these 1260s. Uh, don't get this confused. These are larger than the 1150s, obviously being a 1260. Um, for those that don't know, those kind of correlate to the, the millimeter measurements on the sizes of the bearings. Um, now that we have those two pieces, speaking of those, we're going to go ahead and insert our bearings along with our wheel axles. So I always seat my bearings just by popping the wheel axle in and giving it a little push. go and then this step does call for an o-ring inside each one of these so don't forget your little o-ring these things are a pain to push in um, just when you go to final assembly make sure one of them hasn't fallen out I tend to use a little supplied allen wrench just to kind of force it in there when you get it seated at the bottom it's it's not going to fall out rest of our bearings on there. Let's get that little guy seated. I'm enjoying this pace that I'm doing of not sitting here for three hours and then editing, it, editing all that down to a uh, you know, a 40 minute long video. I kind of do enjoy that just because it gets the build done a lot quicker. Um, but at this pace, I can explain more, kind of keep things in real time. So if anybody's following along with the video, um, you know, they're gonna hopefully enjoy and learn something as, as we go along. Um, at this point too, I will tell you this, just take your axle out, then put in your screws and then you should have enough space. Well, let me double check. Am I going to have enough? Yeah, I'll have enough room to pop that axle in there. I love that they use the blue plastic on this. Um, I joke sometimes about, you know, these parts bin special cars that Tommy has a tendency of uh, putting together to sell more kits based off of stuff they sold in the past but slightly changed. But I'm okay with it. You guys know how much I love my Tommy kits and you know as long as I keep providing cool 
kits for me to build, I will continue to, to purchase these. For so many of us, Tommy, it was such a big part of our childhood. And uh, honestly, every time that I build a kit, I'm transported back to being that, that kid putting together his first Hornet kit. All right, now that we got it on there, again, just check for loose movement. Um, it should move easily. Shouldn't have any kind of binding on there. Um, if it feels just the hair bit tight, meaning that it just has a little, a little friction, that is okay. Um, simply because after you've run a little bit, it, the plastic on plastic will wear in on there. All right, now that we have those pieces together, let's attach them to our arms. And with your front arms, of course, you need to have your suspension uh, bottom mount holes in the front of the arms. So these two arms are going to go like that. And you have your hinge pin or screw pin or whatever you want to call it. It's going to go on the end of our arm, and we'll screw those two guys in there. Ooh. Just until it stops, again, check for movement, make sure there's no binding. Make sure your o-ring is still in there, get your axle set. Let's get the second one going. And now we have a set of assembled front arms. Step 18, we are going to attach our front arms to our front gearbox. Um, this is one of the quicker steps too. I keep saying that. I don't know why I get so hung up on quick steps, but uh, I enjoy it. Makes life easy. So, just a few parts on this one. We need our U-bar. Our These are always a little tricky to line up. We need two of our step screws, the last two washers in the bag, and our joints. And we... Just going to go ahead and attach our upper arms. Don't forget before you do this to put your dog bone in there through the hole. That's there. Okay. Keep in mind your washer is going to go in between these two pieces. Sometimes people accidentally put them out here. Don't. You need that separation in there for your suspension arm. By the way, anybody who's built one of these knows that uh, you know they're kind of quite loosey-goosey on the suspension arms and things like that. It's a lot of play. Um, I suppose you can shim all that out if you wish to me. There we go, good free movement. It's not that big of a deal, just because I have no intentions of going out and racing one of these, but I suppose if I was racing or doing any kind of competition with it, that uh, I would probably take the effort in the arms and spaces like that to, to shim it. Um, I have a whole box full of different sized shims basically a glorified term for a washer, but uh, they tend to be thinner and come in all sorts of different sizes. So if you want to be competitive or you're just that guy and want to have the ultra tightest suspension, etc., um, you can go ahead and get 
Good, nice free movement. And shim it out to your heart's content, if you so feel. Now that we have our front gearbox all set, the final step that we are gonna move on to is step 19 in the instruction manual. And I'm not gonna to cut to that, I'm just gonna go right to it, which is just att attaching our dampers to our front and rear gearboxes. So with our rear gearbox, we'll grab that guy. We need a couple, not a couple, we need all of our little flange tubes, as Tommy likes to call them, flange tubes. So let me get out all eight of the flange tubes, two for each shock. And then we need two of our three by 15 screws, which are the silver ones. And we need six of the three by 15 self tapered ones. Two, three, four, five, and six. Um, there's also a couple press nuts. Uh, if you've never used a press nut, the way that a press nut works is it's threaded. I don't know if this will come through, but they are threaded on the inside. You can see it has some spurs for gripping on the outside. As it screws in, those little teeth on the outside kind of bite into the plastic, which is what keeps a press nut fixed. Um, you generally don't find too many press nuts when it comes to RC cars, but for somebody who builds a lot of quads, the press nuts are uh, used extensively in quad frames. Um, that's usually how flight controllers or PDBs are held onto the frame is through the use of press nuts. They're really nice because they go in flush and look really good when they're built. Okay, so just tighten it. Don't go too hard because you could strip out your little press nut and that is never a good thing. With uh, this kit, as far as your suspension mounting points go, pretty straightforward because there's only on the rear arms one point for your rear suspension mount. And then on the front, we use the outside hole. Screw it in until it's tight. That's one. Let's get our second press nut. Well, we'll get to that in a second. Let's grab our tube. Whatever they call it. This is always fun doing this on video for you guys. You guys get to watch me fumble around with these screws. Does it fall out and all over the place? And you know the beauty of when I fast forward some of these, sometimes I'll have a screw fall out two or three times, and you might not notice because everything is going in, in high speed. Uh, but when I'm doing real time like this video, because these steps don't require a lot, you, know, you get to see all of that. There we go, nice and tight. Double check this one, nice and tight. Final tube, flange tube, and final screw for the rear. Get that in the rear mounting hole. Maybe I should lift it up so you guys can see that rear mounting hole, or, or bottom mounting hole. Very nice. Let's check for movement. 
All right. As you can see, there's not a lot of suspension travel. This is a rally car, but it's, I don't think Tommy ever meant for this thing to run on dirt. Um, as I'd said in the previous video when I was building the shocks, there's a very good potential that I might break these shocks open, remove the shock limiters um, so I can have some more travel on these shocks, as well as maybe play with the eyelets. Um, we'll see. We'll get to that bridge when we cross it. And then our front suspension, it's a little bit easier because we don't have any press nuts going with it. So they're going to mount on the top and bottom on the outside. So we just need our shock. Put our flange tube. I was saying that word, flange tube. And run that through. it off the table otherwise we'll have a lot of shaking. Camera's not actually on the table it's on a tripod but in order for me to keep this view consistent because I don't build all this in one go um, I have everything spaced out I'll show you guys a little trick that I do for my map. If I slide it I have it marked off by tape so I know exactly where to put the mat so that if I am doing things in between shooting these videos when I come back you guys have a consistent view of what you've been looking at and it's not kind of, you know, my videos aren't looking crazy. Every time I come back, everything's in a different position. It's all very consistent. Consistency is good, especially when you're building kits and or shooting videos. stretch of this video and hopefully but when I edit this this is not a 30 minute long video I don't think it will be but I'm probably I've probably exceeded 15 minutes because I don't think I'm gonna be doing any any uh, fast mo or hyper speed for any of the work so let's get this last screw tight. Check our suspension movement. Very nice. And at this point we have our front and rear ends completed on our Lancia 037 Rally. The next video is going to be the last one in the build series. It is still snowing and cold so I have no idea when I'm going to get the body all painted up. But as far as building the chassis all that we have left is our tub chassis, electronics installation, getting our uh, propeller shaft in there that sends the power between the front and rear gearboxes from the motor, and then um, attaching our, our tires and we're gonna have a completed car. So once again, I thank you guys very much for hanging out with me on this build. I hope this was enjoyable. Um, if you guys have questions or comments, as always, leave them in the video in the video leave them down below and then please if you enjoy these videos that I do go ahead and leave me a like and be sure to subscribe with notifications on um, one of the things I always look at YouTube analytics and it always cracks me up that 98% uh, of the views that I get on my videos are from people who are not subscribed and I get a fair amount of views on my videos so for those of you guys who watch my videos and don't subscribe please help me out. Just hit that subscribe button. You don't have to hit the notifications, but just hit that subscribe button and I will appreciate it greatly. Anyways, guys, thanks and I will see you on the next one.